all of you. In this lecture, we will discuss about uh, one of the passive ion detection techniques that is the rate of change of superimposed degree sequence based impedance method. Now, before that, I uh, will discuss what are the limitations of uh, previously discussed ion detection based technique, passive ion detection based technique. The first one is uh, the power quality degradation and also complex in nature. The power quality is uh, one of the major issues in case of active ion detection based technique and also in sometimes in uh, if you could see that uh, uh, the rate of change of frequency that we have discussed in the last class this NDZ the non detection zone is one of the major problems. Now, and also we have uh, sometimes on economical and uh, due to the variation of the feeder topology or uh, line length or x y ratio some of the techniques are also affected. So, due to different uh, limitations uh, in this particular uh, journey like uh, in our uh, research laboratory we have discussed or we have developed one technique and that is basically the rate of change of superimposed negative sequence based technique and uh, that particular technique uh, we will discuss in this class. Here what we do uh, the superimposed negative sequence impedance is going to be calculated first. The first step is we have to collect the voltage three phase voltages V A, V B and V C and also we have to collect three phase currents I, I, B, I, C at the terminal of the DGs or at the terminal of the DERs. Now, after getting this phases, you know uh, we are uh, calculating the phases at the terminal of the DERs using uh, least error square based technique, because the least error square based technique can extract the fundamental if the signal is having decay DC component and also if the signal is having some uh, harmonic components then also we can calculate the fundamental component. After getting this, we will just calculate the negative sequence component of the voltage V 2 that is basically V A plus A square V V plus A V C. And next we will calculate also I 2 that is the negative sequence component of the current that is I A plus A square I B plus A I C. Here I just want to mention one point that uh, mostly our distribution network is unbalanced in nature. Due to the presence of uh, single phase loads uh, unbalancing occurs and due to that the negative sequence voltage negative sequence current both are present even before the disturbance or before the islanding mode of operation. By exploiting this uh, V 2 pre information and I 2 pre information we are interested to calculate this Z 2 pre that is known as this uh, negative sequence impedance of the microgrid system at the terminal of the DGs when the system is not disconnected or there is no disturbance present in the microgrid system or smart grid system that is known as Z 2 pre and this Z 2 pre is cal calculated using this V 2 pre divided by this I 2. Now, suppose uh, some islanding, islanding is there. So, during this islanding mode of operation again we will also because it is a continuous process you know this islanding relay is mounted at the terminal of the DES where continuously we calculate or we measure the voltage and current and the corresponding phases negative sequence components of the voltage and current are going to be calculated continuously. Continuously this J 2 is going to be calculated at the terminal of the distributed energy resources. Now, when this uh, silending is there again also this V 2 island or P O S I have mentioned here post after the disturbance V 2 P O S and I 2 P O S are also calculated. Using this two quantities, so we will calculate the parameter Z 2 P O S is equal to V 2 P O S divided by I 2 P O S. Now, after getting this, this is the after the disturbance and this is before the disturbance. 
The difference between these two impedances is known as the superimposed negative sequence impedance. This one you have to understand. What is the superimposed term? What is the superimposed says? The superimposed term or the definition of the superimposed quantity is that the difference between the post quantity and the previous quantity, pre quantity or the superimposed parameter means the difference between the post parameter minus the pre parameter. Here this is a superimposed parameter or the impedance. If it is superimposed voltage, so it will be del V is equal to V post minus V pre. If it is superimposed current, del I is equal to I post minus I pre. In this case, we have taken superimposed negative sequence best impedance and again we have taken the rate of change of this is important rate of change of superimposed negative sequence impedance and so in short form ROCO SN SI. Now, if we will just uh, see that how to take this rate of change of superimposed component in time domain kth instant at kth instant what is the value this del 2 this delta z to k minus delta z to k minus 1 divided by t k minus t k minus 1. If this is a series of this particular I mean the values of this z value this is the delta z 2 if it is delta z 2. Now, we will take the rate of change means the consecutive samples the consecutive values this uh, delta z 2 this is uh, at kth instant let us say at kth instant and this is for uh, k minus 1 you can make it k here this is k minus 1. So, this z k represents this point and this z k minus 1 represents this point the previous sample or previous value. Difference between these two values that is uh, z k minus uh, delta z 2 k minus delta z 2 k minus 1 divided by the time the corresponding time this is the t axis our delta t I mean the difference between two consecutive values of this delta z 2 what the time gap if we are taking this uh, as uh, 1 millisecond if the sampling frequency is basically how much it is uh, 1 kilohertz the corresponding delta t is going to be 1 millisecond if it is something else delta t is going to be varied. So, based on this uh, recursive manner we will just calculate the rate of change of the negative sequence based superimposed impedance these are the steps shown acquiring this voltage current signal at the digit terminal and the storing the pre and post event voltage currents data which are sampled at the rate of 1 kilohertz. And next we will estimate the phasor using the WLES means least uh, weighted least error square based technique and then we will calculate the pre and post event negative sequence voltage and some current and finally, this z 2 pre z 2 post and we will calculate this equation in our uh, uh, paper or we have mentioned this 12 13. So, here it is basically z delta z 2 and finally, the rate of change of the impedance and if this is greater than certain threshold then I landing is there and uh, if it is not if it is below certain threshold then there is no I landing. Yes of course, uh, this particular technique is also dependent on the threshold values uh, and uh, but however, uh, this technique uh, works fine for 0 power mismatch condition. To realize this particular technique we have taken one sample system like this uh, we have uh, it is a 13 bus I triple 13 bus system where we have this PV generation this is our PV system and here we have another PV system and different types of loads are also connected here loads. So, based on this uh, uh, microgrid system and here is our main grid and the system is uh, simulated using the RS CAD software uh, which is present in real time digital simulator that is RTDS. Inside RTDS we have one software that is called as RS CAD just like our PS CAD RS CAD and using this RS CAD software we have simulated this IEEE 13 bus system to realize the technique. Now, if we see the first figure here it is written S n i that is the superimposed negative sequence impedance right. So, S n S i S n S i stands for neg superimposed negative sequence impedance and you could see that uh, for different uh, percentage of power mismatch like uh, 
minus 50 percent, 40 percent, minus 30 percent and we went up to plus 50 percent. The variation is also I mean we did for uh, 80 percent because of course, uh, if we exceeds every if we be close to the higher percentage of power mismatch the factor is very good, but it is a difficult situation for lower power mismatch condition. So, in every algorithm it is desirable to test the performance of the technique for lower percentage of the power mismatch mostly for zero power mismatch condition. And also you can see here for zero power mismatch condition also we have this zero percentage power mismatch where the technique is working properly. Now, see for minus 50 percent this is the first one is for uh, active power mismatch minus 50 percent minus 40 percent the corresponding graph is basically on the positive direction. And for the plus that is plus 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent uh, the particular uh, SNSI lie uh, this particular values these values lie in the negative direction. So, this is in the positive direction altogether and these are in the negative direction. Why? What is the reason behind it? It is a good analysis point that uh, during this positive power mismatch condition already we have discussed that this P load this is our P load is greater than P d c. That means, uh, load is more and uh, generation is less and I am talking about for the island and microgrid operation. At this condition the microgrid is islanded and we, we, are, we have calculated the superimposed negative sequence impedance and then we have shown here for different percentage of power mismatch. Now, this if it is uh, this delta p is let us say plus 50 percent that means, my p l is greater than this p g p d g in that case what happens the v 2 basically this v 2 is decreased the v 2 value because uh, the voltage decreases the load increases voltage decreases right. So, if the voltage decreases uh, this i 2 that means, my z 2 z 2 value also decreases and what happens through z 2 pre this is my z 2 post and this is my z 2 pre, but before this psi landing the z 2 pre remains constant unless until you are going to change the system because the system is not going to be changed anymore the system is as it is, but uh, during this psi landed mode of operation due to the different disconnection of the IDGs or disconnection of breakers the V 2 and I 2 are going to be affected or impedance of the circuit uh, is going to be affected. So, this J 2 post is different for different uh, power mismatch situations. Now, if it is uh, lower than this my J 2 pre the difference of the superimposed negative sequence is going to be what it will be negative and that is why this plus 50 percent all together the S and S i are in the negative direction. That means, as if this uh, z 2 post is less than my z 2 pre and similarly, if you will come for the minus that is a negative uh, power mismatch situation in that case uh, my impedance z 2 we are expecting assuming this z 2 post is greater than my z 2 pre and that is why the all are in the positive direction. So, keeping in this uh, particular concept and we have taken this uh, negative sequence uh, uh, part of this active reactive power and this is also positive part of the reactive power and the corresponding figure is shown here. Now, coming to the rate of change of part why this is 0 let us say this I landing has occurred at the 1 second and up to 1 second from 0 to 1 second this S n S i rate of change of S n S i is 0. Because before the disturbance this z 2 post is equal to z 2 pre. The difference between two consecutive uh, impedance values basically it is constant that is why the before the disturbance or before the I landing this z 2 post is equal to z 2 p and the difference is going to be 0. And that is why this rate of change of this S and S i up to the inception of this I landing event 0. And when this I land has occurred or I landing event has occurred then there is a remarkable change in this S and S i rate of change of the negative sequence superimposed impedance. And taking this particular change by exploiting this particular change will decide whether we are 
if just we have to give trip command or not, whether the eye landing relay is going to give some trip command or not, right. And of course, we have to see whether this rate of change of negative sequence impedance has crossed the limit or threshold value that is also important. And uh, in this case, we have maintained 20 as a threshold value for uh, our purpose like for 1 kilohertz sampling frequency if the value of this rate of change of superimposed negative sequence crosses 20 then we will declare it is a it is an eye landing event otherwise it is non eye landing event. Also we have tested this particular technique for different types of uh, non eye landing events like you could see here the capacitor switching and also different types of faults like a g fault, b g fault and feeder disconnection here and uh, yes uh, disconnection connection of the loads right inductive loads, resistive loads. So, these are all non eye landing events. The eye landing event is the disconnection of the microgrid from the main grid and disconnection or connection of the DERs within the microgrid system with the condition that the main grid is connected uh, those conditions known as non eye landing conditions capacitor switching faults. So, those are also non eye landing events and also we have tested for this non eye landing events what will be the performance of the proposed technique. You could see here that uh, this figure shows this rate of change of HNSI the negative superimposed negative sequence impedance. Here the values you could see that it crosses uh, it is here this is the threshold threshold value this is the threshold value and uh, the corresponding characteristic here you can see RO CNSI these are the corresponding figures. Now, we will go for one effect of eye landing and reconnection of adjacent PV, PGU and capacity load switching case. This is one of the non eye landing event and here you see that for this case this is the rate of change of superimposed negative sequence current. Here you could see the value is within 20 within 20 as already I have mentioned that uh, in case of uh, this uh, eye landing condition the threshold we kept 20 if the value is crossing 20 then it will be declared as eye landing event otherwise it is not. So, we have tested for different type of capacitor switching mode here you could see that this value is below 20 that means it is not an eye landing situation. Also we have tested the performance of the proposed technique for single pole tripping situation. What is single pole tripping situation? Suppose this is uh, one bus this is another bus and within this bus three lines are present and the corresponding poles uh, like of the circuit breaker are present and due to certain fault let us say in phase A if any fault AG fault occurs the breaker of uh, one particular I mean the breakers both the sides are open. That means, this if it is open and this is also open that particular phase is out of service we can keep it like this it is open. So, this condition is known as single pole tripping situation keeping other two phases healthy other phases like B phase and C phase they are carrying the power whereas, the phase A is faulty. So, it is taken out of service. So, this condition is known as single pole tripping situation and this situation leads to unbalancing because one phase is out of service and uh, it is quite good chance of uh, generation of uh, what the negative sequence components and of course, uh, the fault is there the fault is isolated. So, this negative sequence uh, component also may lead uh, mislead that it will be just say it will say that it is an eye landing situation. So, to test that because our technique is uh, based on the negative sequence component. So, we have to also test the performance of the technique for the single pole tripping situation right. So, in one of the feeder we did the test and you could see here this is a voltage and current for that particular event single pole tripping situation. You could see here we have a fault in phase A that is where the phase A current is almost 0 here and this uh, black one and this red one corresponding phase B and phase C current. And you know during single pole tripping there is slow oscillation which is experienced in current waveform as well as the voltage waveform due to the 
uh, power mismatch that is due to the uh, basically the mechanical power and the electrical power. Now, this is the corresponding SNSI, the superimposed negative sequence impedance and this is the rate of change of SNSI. See, uh, the value of this ROC SNSI is well within 20, because this 20 is our threshold for 1 kilohertz sampling period. See, I will also discuss in further sections that the sampling frequency also decides the threshold. If the sampling frequency is different, obviously my delta t is also going to be different. So, then my threshold is going to be changed. And this is also one of the demerit of this particular technique. If the sampling frequency varies, then the corresponding threshold is also going to be changed. And this is uh, for sampling frequency f s is equal to 1 kilohertz for this case. When the sampling frequency is 1 kilohertz and for this single pole tripping situation, uh, this, uh, this is declared as a non islanding situation, it is not declared as a islanding situation. Now, uh, we have also tested this uh, performance of the proposed technique uh, for different uh, tie line connections. For that purpose, we have taken this uh, IEEE 34 bus system and here you can see that different types of tie line like tie line 1, this is our tie line 2, this is line 1, this is tie line 3. By connecting and disconnecting uh, these tie lines, uh, we have created uh, 4 scenarios like scenario 1, this is scenario 1 and this is our scenario 2, this is scenario 3, two, this is 2, this is 3 and also here we have scenario 4. So, based on different combination of the tie line connections or disconnections, we have decided different types of scenarios. Based on these scenarios, uh, here we have tabulated the corresponding values of SNSI and ROC SNSI. If you will take the scenario 1, this one, so the corresponding SNSI value is 0 0.737 and this ROC NSI is 30.77. That means, if it is uh, crossing 20 and it is declared as an eye landing, eye landing event and you could see here throughout this table all are basically the values are above 20 and that is why all the scenarios are treated as eye landing event with connection of this tie line system. That means, it indicates this tie line connection uh, has no impact on the performance of the proposed technique. It is as, as good as it is de declaring that this is an eye landing event and s yes, we have taken here for minus 2 percent active power mismatch. This A stands for active power, P stands for power, M stands for mismatch. Similarly, also we have tested for non islanding event for this particular IEEE 34 bus system and uh, here we have created a ABC type fault at F 3 location and feeder 1 disconnection. These two are basically taken by considering the location of different DGs like DFIG, PVPGY, this DFI is basically the wind system and this is our PV system and this is a synchronous based DG system. A different type of uh, renewable sources also considered to test the performance of the technique. Now, you could see here finally, I will just come to this column where we have written this rate of change of superimposed negative sequence impedance and you could see very clearly that all the values are below minus 20 or plus 20. Right. So, that is why we can say that this particular system is very, I mean technique is very robust even for the uh, different type of non aligning conditions, the technique works well. Also, we have tested for different type of control strategies, which are used for the inverter of the different type of renewable sources. Let us say for our solar system or wind system, we use uh, like P by F Q by V droop control system for the voltage source inverter, this is VSI uh, that is a technique used in the inverters. Now, for different types of converters uh, controllers, whether this technique is working fine or not. Yes, of course, because uh, you know uh, when we are designing certain islandization technique, we should 
test the performance of the technique for different type of control strategies. Because it may happen that for certain control strategy this technique will work or it may happen that some other technique it may not work. So, that is why it is very necessary that we should test the performance of the technique for different types of control strategies. And for this case this is the block diagram for the solar based technique and uh, this is a system we have simulated using this uh, RSCAD software of the RTDS system that is a real time digital simulator. And uh, it is found that uh, the technique works well like for 10 minus 10 percent, 5 percent, 2 percent this is SNSI and this is a corresponding voltage and this is SNSI. And here to some extent you could see that uh, very close to the threshold you know it will be very difficult to decide whether this is an islanding system, the island condition or not. That is also one demerit we got, it is not demerit, it is detecting the islanding situation, but it is very close you could see here it is very close to the threshold right. And uh, these are for the frequency based relays and also we have given one comparison with the existing islanding relays, existing is the frequency and rate of change of CNI both together compare. And uh, to some extent this is also oscillatory in nature also, it is not very straightforward what we have seen the previous results. Next a constant PQ type uh, control strategy which is used in VSI of the solar system also we have tested and the total block diagram are present inside the RS card software of the RTDS. And uh, here also we have tested and this is the corresponding diagram. If you see here the rate of change of final figure you could see here that this rate of change of super minute sequence current it exceeds the threshold. The threshold is 20 here and it exceeds the threshold value. Finally, I will discuss uh, one HIL test bed which is also very important for us to learn or to know. Uh, in our uh, laboratory in the department of electrical engineering we have this uh, HIL test bed facility. For this HIL, this HIL stands for hardware in the loop system and for this HIL test bed we need the RTDS real time digital simulator and D space 11004. Here I have just shown here this is our RTDS and this is our uh, D space DS 1104 and you could see that the system as already I have discussed whether it is IEEE 13 bus system or IEEE 34 bus system whatever and uh, these two systems are going to be simulated using this RSCAD software of the RTDS. And after the simulation we will just tap, we will take this uh, GTAO card means uh, uh, this analog output card because RTDS uh, has uh, analog output and a digital output card and also it has uh, digital input and analog input cards. So, th through this analog output card we will take the analog signal to the D space. And inside the space our algorithm is running the impedance superimposed rate of change of superimposed based technique uh, is basically coded inside this space. Uh, this space works on the in the medium of uh, MATLAB. So, MATLAB 13, 13A uh, 2013 software which is used inside it this D space that the codes are written are embedded and using this uh, analog signal the voltage current signal it will calculate the rate of change of superimposed negative sequence impedance and the corresponding decision is going to be fed again to the RTDS through this GTAI card, AI means analog input card. So, this it will go to the RTDS and there the corresponding circuit breaker of the disease or renewable energy sources are going to be opened. So, that the DG will be shut down if any islanding is there. If there is no islanding, so there is no necessary to open the circuit breaker which is present near to the DGs. So, this is how this uh, particular HL test bed looks like and uh, here some of the practical pictures we have provided and this is one of the sample result as per the hardware is concerned. You can see this is the SNSI and it crosses the threshold that means the trip signal is going to be generated. These are some of the co comparison with the conventional techniques. This is for the rate of change of power and this is dp by dt and rate of change of frequency and phase jump techniques. We have seen that in all the cases this uh, NDZ is a common problem if it is like uh, a non detection zone 
basically zero power mismatch condition, then uh, most of the conventional techniques fail. Whereas, this rate of change of uh, negative sequence based technique basically operates. And this is also one of the technique we have also realized negative sequence current injection based technique. This is one of the uh, active in of the next class I will discuss about this active island irrigation based technique there we will discuss in more detail and this is one of the another result and how to select this threshold also we have studied very rigorously by varying the sampling frequency 2 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, 500 hertz, 200 hertz for different uh, sampling frequencies also we have uh, simulated and all corresponding superimposed negative sequence impedances and its corresponding rate of change of superimposed negative sequence impedance also we have calculated and we found that based on this uh, varying this sampling frequency the threshold also varies that is one of the demerit of this particular technique. And this is how this uh, percentage of active power mismatch and the time and this is the PV generation capacity and the corresponding parameter that is rate of change of SNSI varies. Now, in summary, I will just discuss here that a solution we have provided here based on the superimposed negative sequence components and the harmonic if uh, present inside the voltage current signal by using a least error square based technique, we can always extract the fundamental voltage frequency phases. And in this case, we have uh, taken one 13 IEEE 13 bus system and also we have simulated one IEEE 34 bus system where we have also taken the tie line switches and single pole tripping situation, high impedance faults, different uh, uh, islanding and non islanding situations are created and the corresponding results are uh, basically tabulated and it is also figured out. And it is uh, the final conclusion for this particular technique is the it needs uh, rigorous simulation practice by varying the sampling frequency, how to set the corresponding threshold that is one of the major drawback of this particular technique. Thank you to all of you.